Hello people. This video is an idea born of the past couple of videos that I have made along with conversations with members of the community and other content producers. This is my attempt to answer the question that I posed in the title. What is the difference between a bachelor and a MGTOW? And subsequently, the tenets of being a MGTOW. Before anyone starts screaming at the top of their lungs that I'm proposing rules for MGTOW, I need you all to understand that this is, first of all, a discussion, and I'm expecting others to participate in it. This video includes my opinions, and I propose to any content producer that wants to add to this conversation or completely destroy my video to please feel free to do so. This video contains what I understand to be MGTOW and my five tenants. Therefore, take this video as a personal opinion piece and do with it what you like. The problem as was mediated to myself by commenters and people that I had conversations with is the following. There seems to be a lack of understanding as to what constitutes a MGTOW. We have a very loose term that as it stands, it basically translates to a bachelor. This was something that Stardusk addressed in one of his latest video where he proposed the know thyself argument. However, I think we can do a bit better than that and we can evolve our ideas further. But even in that video, people were against the idea that know thyself is even necessary, since that will constitute work. The only tenet for many people should be to only get married, an action which is not even an action, it's something that's passive. Therefore, no work or effort is necessary. All you have to do is exist and be a bachelor. I don't think that's good enough. I have a lot of disagreements with the above statement and I have problems generally with intellectual laziness, but that is my cross to bear and something I have to continue to live with. But MGTOW simply being bachelors is not good enough, gentlemen. It really isn't. Mind you, the word bachelor also has this added connotation that the man is looking for a woman. And I know we definitely do not want this added connotation in our community. So there must be something else there. This video is supposed to bring forward discussion. This video is supposed to start something where people can clearly express their opinions together in the comment section and also in any reply videos that might ensure. This video should not bring forward division, but a discussion. And I want to stress that. Though this video does not contain within it the basics of basics, it will contain within it basic words that we use in MGTOW. I will try very hard to keep my ideas concise and to the point, and I invite discussion, disagreement, refuting, and whatever else. This is an important discussion and something that all of us should talk about. The reason why I think this is important is because the ideas evolved naturally and the people flooded into the community again quite naturally. Now, the ideas are expanding and are spreading to include anything and everything, as long as the person proposing the idea is happy with it, which of course is a ludicrous concept. MGTOW as I see it should be the road to personal freedom for each man, the freedom that comes from self-discovery and self-actualization. Therefore, there are certain steps which are necessary to take in this path. Recently, I had a discussion with some individuals where I had to explain why the manifesto is not really what MGTOW represents at present. And for those of you who don't know what the MGTOW manifesto is, Google it. It's basically an ancient document of baseless traditionalist crap. Where we are at present, it's very far away from that original document, which makes it completely irrelevant. MGTOW above everything is a journey that aims to make you a better man, and a more developed man at the end. And by me saying that MGTOW aims to make you a better man, it almost puts the implication on MGTOW to act upon yourselves and change you towards something better. But that is not the truth. No, the journey is yours to take, and the path is yours and yours alone to walk. MGTOW content provides the knowledge base, but you, you yourself, have to do the work. Also by me saying a better man, I do not mean that in the gynocentric sense. I mean it in the masculine sense, that of strength and independence. A MGTOW at the end of the journey is a red pill awakened, self-actualized and free man. That is the end result. The MGTOW path is one of the mind. At least that is how I choose to see it. But in order to achieve that, 
there should be a couple of things that you need to do and a couple of things that you need to learn from. This is not a step-by-step -step process, but a continuous process of self-development. You notice how I did not say improvement there because I don't want you to expect that this journey is one that will make you feel good all of the time. Quite the opposite. I'm expecting this journey to make you feel like hell every time you learn something new. It is a journey towards truth and truth always hurts. After you have digested the majority of things, then you should be able to reinvent yourself in order to live in a world that is no longer governed by blue pill madness, but rather red pill understanding. Therefore, let me propose a couple of tenets here for MGTOW as I see them, and later on I will expand on them. The tenets for myself are number 1. Do not get married and do not cohabitate, especially if you will end up being legally married in the end. Number two, study and understand female nature. Number three, understand that the system that you live in is inherently gynocentric. That is, it promotes the female over the disposable male. Number four, study and understand men and by extension yourself, know thyself and shed your ego. Number five, live free as a self-actualized male. Allow me at this point to read something from The Rational Male, Preventive Medicine. I'm aware Rollo Tomas is a pickup artist minded individual, however I believe this small part from his book has merit and needs to be explored further here. In your mid-twenties you are at the apex of your potential with regards to the direction you will influence your life to go. I'm not going to make any friends by pointing this out, but what pisses off most serial monogamists is the unspoken regret of having assumed the responsibilities of what monogamy demands before they truly understood their potential. If you are single at 35 with a moderate amount of personal success, you are the envy of most men because you possess two of the most valuable resources men your age or older statistically do not. Time and freedom. I envy you. You are unshackled by the responsibilities, liabilities and accountabilities that most men your age in marriages, long-term relationships with children or recovering from divorce must contend with daily. Without any intention, you are in such a position that you can go in any direction of your choosing without considering the impact of your choice for anyone but yourself. Many other men, even in the most ideal of long-term relationships, do not have this luxury. When you think of all the responsibilities that are required of most men and women in modern life today, you have won the lottery. A bit later on in the chapter he says this, Women are dream killers, not because they have an agenda to be so, but because men will too willingly sacrifice their ambitions for a steady supply of pussy and the responsibilities that women attach to this. This quote from this book is something that inspires me. I know it doesn't sound like much, but if we are to build a community based on a common understanding, we must never forget the people that come later on, the men who eventually see the world for how it really is and how it functions, who understand the effects of gynocentrism on society and see the world through the red pill eyes. These men will plan and live their own lives and realize their own ambitions or fail to do so, but it will all be because of them. There are no longer excuses or abuse in such a reality. You're able to guide yourself through the jungle knowing full well what lies ahead. The freedom comes from understanding and accepting the knowledge. And for the men that have gotten hurt, who have been abused and are with us in this community, and we have many, many, many people like that, the truth will eventually set them free. There should be no excuses or oversimplifications, no hate and no anger left once you understand and accept everything. And even for the most damaged of souls, there will be a way out of the darkness, the bitterness and the regret that governs their life. The very same principles will apply for those men and the same freedom will be given to them if they are to allow themselves the time to heal. Men should live for themselves and everything else, planned or unplanned, should be a complement to their lives. It's important that we as men are able to transcend our blue pill state of mind, absolve ourselves from our past, reject our gynocentric brainwashing, shed our fragile egos and rebuild ourselves to the men that we were going to be. Allow me now to run through the tenets one by one and explain my rationale for choosing them. Number 1. Do not get married and do not cohabitate, especially if you will end up being legally married in the end. 
This is clearly important as it allows you a space where you can be free to express yourself and be as you like, and that space is your own home. This also takes away the power from the legal system that can potentially be used to legally steal from you and imprison you into servitude for the next 18 years. Number two, study and understand female nature. I personally believe that this is a very important tenet and it needs to be done well. You need to understand women and hypergamy, and by saying that, I want men to search deeper as to the inner workings of women, even if the thinking may appear to them to be improbable or impossible. The sexual reproductive strategy for women seems to be a strange thing, and that's because it is, and it doesn't speak to anything similar that we do as men. As such, we need to keep an open mind. We will never be able to understand what hypergamy feels like, just like they won't understand what a boner feels like. As we tell women that they can never understand what it feels like to be a man, we can also not understand what it feels like being a woman. With that being said, we need to at least try and understand the inner workings of their biology. Your bias should never cloud science and facts. Oversimplistic statements and explanations will not help your understanding. This still keeps you locked inside a system as you are in essence creating a mental schema to express blue pill belief systems in your mind. Nature is as nature is. You only need to understand it. Feeling good about it does not matter to nature and it shouldn't really matter to you either. I understand that losing the magic of love, the hope of that one, the worry that you will be alone to be quite painful, but the red pill is not there to fill the vacuum in your heart. Only you can do that. And the red pill should never be used as a replacement religion to the religion of love. Our understanding is this now, our understanding will change and it will evolve as we keep up with the research and the learning. You need to be aware of that. Number three, understand that the system that you live in is inherently gynocentric, that is, it promotes the female over the disposable male. This is an important lesson for all of us to understand and to learn. A man will always be seen as a disposable commodity, easily replaceable in comparison to the womb of a female. This is not going to change. This is reality. Your needs are secondary to her needs. The majority of people are blue pill and they operate under the same mode that you previously did. They play their disposable roles while refusing to recognize that they are indeed as disposable as they are. You guys need to understand and accept that in this world, back in the matrix if you like, because you will still have to work and exist, the world is prepared to put your needs below the needs of any female. You are a disposable man with no inherent reproductive value. There are laws that exist to protect females despite their actions. There are provisions to care for the female at every stage of her life. Her word is truth and you're always a potential aggressor or predator. You need to understand that you're always expected to act a role. Whether in society or in family life, you are always acting a role. You're always expected to perform. In this world, when you're engaging with the matrix, you can never truly be yourself and you have to accept that. But you can always choose to reject it and minimize your engagement with that matrix as much as you can. Do not simply understand this, but know it. And to this I will add, pay close attention to the change in legislation and how it can potentially affect you. If you have no ties anywhere, your future may potentially be elsewhere. But remember, wherever you move, the system will always be inherently gynocentric. Even the so-called patriarchy was also gynocentric. Number four, study and understand men and by extension yourself, know thyself and shed your ego. This is by far the most important aspect on this list. Despite this being the most important tenet, I believe things should happen following a certain pattern. I believe a previously blue pale man cannot understand his own nature without first understanding female nature. That is to say, you won't be able to recognize on yourself the remnants of all the years of female and gynocentric conditioning without first recognizing hypergamy and how the collective works. The aim of this is to be emotionally independent of outside influences. The aim of this is to be emotionally shameless and in control of yourself. Understanding and accepting yourself gives you control over your emotions and your actions, and once you finally have accepted yourself, then you can aim for goals that were previously beyond your reach. Shedding your ego, your belief of invincibility, of the macho and bravado self, gives you humility and appreciation of who you are. Therefore, knowing this, you can truly be yourself in your choices and in the way that you choose to live your own life. 
In this confidence of the liberated man, you can see who you truly are, your strengths and your weaknesses, and you can aim forward to a future that you alone will shape. Number 5. Live free as a self-actualized male. This is the end result. This is the aim and the direction. This is my goal, at least, and so should be for everyone else. If you are in MGTOW for any other reason, be it pussy, attention, money, you're in the wrong place. Men have long put other priorities over all of those things. Those things become the priority once everything else fails. Once you start living someone else's dream and once you are so insecure about yourself that you need to prove your own self-worth to others with accomplishments such as attention, pussy and money, then you're not walking the path of self-actualization. MGTOW men should be above all of that. Be content with yourself and enable yourself to live that which makes you happy. The three attributes previously described can be pleasurable, can be enjoyable, but they are a complement to yourself and to your being. Some of them are necessary to enable your dreams and others may be a hindrance. You are in charge, take the wheel and drive in the direction of your choosing, and even if you fail, there are no regrets and you were in the driving seat throughout. Please take this video with a pinch of salt. I tried hard to elaborate my beliefs and my direction and my version of MGTOW. I tried to differentiate between the bachelor male from the MGTOW male using concepts that we mostly understand here in MGTOW. Add your ideas in the comments, make refute videos or share your own ideas and let's try to solve this puzzle because I think it's time to define MGTOW. Thank you very much for listening. This was Nikuchowski talking about all things man.